Welcome to our video series on market segmentation techniques for improved business results. It consists of five short tutorials and as you can see each covers a different aspect of this topic. By the time you've finished watching all five you'll have a clearer understanding about market segmentation. What it is, what it does, why it's darn near imperative to use it, how to use it, and perhaps most important of all, how using it can help your business achieve greater success. Let's start with the question, what is market segmentation? At its most basic level, market segmentation recognizes not all people are alike. They have different motives, interests, preferences, wants, and needs. This creates a dilemma because it's unlikely one product alone will satisfy everyone equally well. After all, how can it if different customers want different things? But wait, market segmentation also recognizes not all people are unalike. In fact, there are many who share common interests, motives, wants, and needs. If a group with similar interests can be found among a larger pool of potential customers, and we offer them the right product or product line, then maybe we'll be able to satisfy everyone in the group equally well. So let's say we market a product line around the color green because we think there's a group or segment that will like these green products. The next question is, is the group going to be large enough for the business to thrive, or for that matter, simply survive? If it costs us this much to offer the green product line, and we get this much steady revenue from selling it, then we're making a decent profit. But if instead we only get this much revenue from the group, then we're operating at a loss. This could indicate that the green segment isn't large enough, or maybe doesn't purchase often enough, to turn a profit with it. Now let's try something else. Let's add a yellow product line and market it to the people who like yellow. In doing so, we can share some of our investment costs between the two colors such as combining together their production, storage, display, and transaction costs. This move will yield cost efficiencies, and they in turn will minimize the amount of extra costs added to our total cost for doing business. At the same time, however, we'll be pulling in a whole new market segment. Should we happen to sell a lot of yellow products, we'll have increased our revenue well beyond the added cost that came with adding this new product line to our product mix. If we replicate the same idea with blue and red and get roughly the same results, then we're using a combination of cost efficiencies and market segmentation to produce an increase in our overall profit margin from this to this. In fact, we see this done all the time in the real world. Take the automobile industry, for example. They produce different models of cars with different colors and features to appeal to different market segments. By doing so, they're hoping to create cost efficiencies on the production side, gain more customers on the sales side, and consequently maximize their profit margin. Now admittedly, this is an oversimplified explanation for market segmentation, but you get the general idea. The objective is to identify what might appeal to a given market segment and then tailor your value proposition across the entire value chain to coincide with it. You'll want to engineer the products and services component to mesh with their wants and needs. You'll use the communications component to excite interest and action. You'll use the transaction component to make it financially agreeable. And you'll use the distribution channels component to get it into their hands. The bottom line is that you will always be looking for ways to profitably improve the customer experience. And the clues for doing that will come from the knowledge you acquire about the market segment. You'll also have the option of targeting several market segments, whether to increase sales, gain cost efficiencies, or do both. Before we leave this tutorial, there's one last matter to cover. In a competitive marketplace, Market segmentation won't necessarily give you a competitive advantage just because you do it. It's not about doing it for the sake of doing it. 
It's about doing it to strengthen your appeal among current customers as well as attract new ones. If someone else is doing a better job of segmenting the market and serving those needs, then they'll get the customers instead. So this leaves a challenging question. How can you effectively segment your market so that it works better for you than it does for someone else? In the next four tutorials, we'll look at a few techniques for approaching this task. As we proceed, you may even find that the best results will come from mixing and matching several techniques rather than using just one. We'll delve deeper into this matter starting with part two. See you then.